ISO 27001 Annex A 8.6 Capacity Management. So what is the standard looking for? The use of resources should be monitored and adjusted in line with current and expected capacity requirements. Okay, capacity management. This is a technical control. This is about understanding what resources you've got whether or not you have capacity within that resource and then planning capacity increases or decreases as required. It's about monitoring and reviewing that capacity on an ongoing basis. One of the questions that I get is, do we have a capacity management policy? The standard doesn't necessarily require a policy. It requires a process. So let's have a look at what that process can include. So the first thing we want to do is identify the resources to manage. So the kinds of traditional capacity management and resources we would consider are things like storage space, disk space, CPU usage, memory usage, network bandwidth. You also have capacity in your staffing and in your connected utilities. Basically anything you will use that will have a capacity and a limit. So what are we doing here? We're looking at risk assessing. We're looking at understanding exactly who we are and exactly what it is that we need. If you are uh, building and selling an online database, then you're going to be looking at things like how much storage are you going to need? What is the forecasting for that storage over time? You're going to be looking at do you have enough CP and memory? How many users are going to be connected at the same time? So this is a technical implementation specific to how you implement, how you operate. It may well be the case that this is something that is built into things like your AWS, your Microsoft, your online environments, your SaaS platforms. It may well be the case that there is tiering within whatever products or service that you're purchasing that comes with additional resources. Um, or it may well be that you are managing and administrating that on a daily basis and that you can take a more granular level control over that. Whatever it may be, what you are looking at doing is putting in place a document that sets out what your capacity requirements are and what your capacity projections are and then putting in some kind of monitoring on a regular basis that you can evidence that you are monitoring and reviewing those capacity requirements. Things, as I say, that you can look at in there, things that come within, within systems, absolutely that. If you've got an online web server, you know the amount of bandwidth that you need into that server from a network point of view. You know what kind of memory you need to, um, to serve up the web pages or the application that you've got. You know at the back end what kind of capacity that you need within storage. If you have file servers, if you have uh, dedicated file servers and they come with a one terabyte drive, that's a capacity hard limit, right? So you know that you're measuring and monitoring against that, putting in uh, processes that deal with that, either through housekeeping and resolving your capacity as it stands or through putting in additional capacity so that you can move forward. The requirement of the standard here is you're going to have a capacity management plan. So the top three mistakes are you don't have a plan. Right. I mean, the usual thing here that go wrong is people who don't actually know what resources they need, what they have and what they would do if those resources were starting to reach capacity. So identify your resource requirements, record what you're using, record what you need, record what your triggers and your thresholds are and the plan that you will take off of the back of that. Speak with your IT team, speak with your technical team, speak with your service providers, understand what can be put in place so that you can evidence capacity planning. At the basic level, if I was a, if I was a one man band or early stage, the things that I'd be looking at are things like my Dropbox storage or my file server storage, and my local laptop storage, all the way through to a massive online SaaS platform in a multi-distributed environment with multi hundreds of thousands of users that would be looking a lot more granular and a lot more technical, but you're gonna rely on a professional to help you to build that. The second mistake that we see is that you just didn't act on the plan. You had a plan and you didn't act on it. So you set up your measures, you set up your monitors, you say this is the capacity planning, these are the triggers, but then you never look at it, right? That can be a mistake. Well, it is a mistake. So come the audit, the auditor looks at it, uh, pulls up your capacity management monitoring tool and he sees or she sees or they see that everything is in the red, everything is exceeding capacity, your memory is absolutely burning out, uh, your, your networks are, you know, beyond like capacity and need to be or, or you know, reaching their throttle limits and it's at that point that you know you're going to get that fail so the problem is you haven't acted on plan have a plan document it 
act on the plan and you're going to be absolutely golden. Final tip, recounting that, speak to a professional within your IT teams, within your technical teams of the products and services and technologies that you use to help you come up with that. My name is Stuart Barker, I am the ISO 27001 Ninja, the online guru for ISO 27001 as we work our way through the NX A8 technical controls. And until the next one, peace out.